once again, thank you for tuning in, brethren. We're going to continue tonight our series, uh, Be One, Make One, and we continue our, that is, we are focused in our vision, uh, multiplications through discipleship, and our strategy is win, connect, train, and send. And tonight, I want to speak about train one. You know, we got, we're going to train one. One, that is our challenge. So, tonight, I want to speak about train one, prepare one to multiply. Prepare one to multiply. So today, we will talk about biblical discipleship. It is about how to train and empower multiplying uh, leaders. And the Bible says in Matthew chapter 28, verse 18 to 19, that is the Great Commission. The Great Commission is also the Great Commandment. And Jesus came and spoke to them saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go therefore and make disciples of all the nation, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the ends of the earth. So the Great Commission is also the Great Commandment in Matthew chapter 28 verse 18 to 20. So the Lord Jesus Christ with His authority commanded us to go and make disciples of all nations. So we're going to talk about biblical discipleship. It is about how to train and empower empower multiplying leaders. That is our challenge. You know, Be one, make one. And uh the, that, that is the great commandment of the Lord Jesus Christ. Empower us. And even the Apostle Paul encouraged us to do the same. In 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 1 to 2, the Bible says that you therefore my son, uh, we know that uh, Apostle Paul, the discipler, his disciple is Timothy. He disciple Timothy. He considered him uh, my son, he called him my son. You therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. Because uh, Timothy, when he was uh, even when he's young, he started, you know, to uh, he started the ministry, and uh, Paul entrusted him on that ministry, even though he's young. Uh, that's why uh, Paul is encouraging him. And here, uh, Paul write to Timothy. He, sa he said that, You therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus and the things that you have heard from me among many witnesses. And then he said, Commit this to a faithful man. To whom? Faithful men who will be able to teach other also. So, think, uh, notice here the word uh, uh, Paul is saying to Timothy. That he said, uh, and the things that you have heard from me to his disciples among many witnesses. Commit this to faithful. You're going, he is going to commit to who? Faithful men. Faithful men who will be able to teach other also. That means they are well trained. They are ready to train one also. Hallelujah. So tonight we're speaking about, we're talking about biblical discipleship. It is about how to train and empower. Uh, Paul is teaching Timothy to empower. To whom? Faithful men. Faithful men who will be able to teach other also. Hallelujah. Empower multipl multiplying leaders. Now what is discipleship? What is discipleship? We talk about that in, your, in our prayer meeting and even in your connection group. What is discipleship? Define disciple. The word disciple literally means a learner. Simple as that, a learner. So according to my expository, expository dictionary of New Testament words, 
it denotes one who follows another teaching. Just like Jesus and his disciples, his, his 12 disciples. And just like Timothy, his disciple, uh, Timothy. A disciple wasn't only a learner, but also an adherent. And also adherent. For this reason, disciples will were spoken of as imitators of their teachers. Imitators of their teachers. Tinutularan nila yung kanilang discipler. Hallelujah. So the goal in being a disciple. What is the goal in being a disciple? The goal is of being disciple. Jesus said, every disciples, every disciple will be like his teacher. That is in Luke chapter 6 verse 40. The Bible says, a disciple is not above his teacher. It's not above his teacher, but everyone who is perfectly trained will be like his teacher. So this, see, notice the, uh, the thing about this. This is the Lord Jesus is speaking. A disciple is not above his teacher. But everyone who is perfectly trained will be like his teacher. Hallelujah. So to Christ, a disciple is to strive to be like him. Nakikita yung uri ng pamumuhay ni Kristo sa ating mga buhay. Yung mga disipulo nakikita sa buhay nila si Kristo. Nakikita si Kristo sa kanilang mga buhay. Tinutularan nila. Hallelujah. So, a disciple models, loves, trust, and obedience to God. So, a disciple models love, trust, and obedience in God. In John chapter 15, verse 9 to 10, the Bible says, As the Father loved me, Jesus speaking, As the Father loved me, I also have loved you. He's speaking to his disciples. Abide in my love. Abide in my love if you keep my commandments. So, if you keep my commandments, abide my love. If you keep my commandments, abide in my love, abide in my love. So as the Father loved me, I also have loved you, abide in my love. If you, if you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love. Just I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in His love. Saan mapapatunayan ito? Pagsunod. Saan? Sa utos. Napapatunayan yan, yung pagsunod. Hallelujah. If you keep the commandments, keep my commandments, you will abide in my love. Hallelujah. Praise God. Now, in Galatians chapter 2, verse 20, this is uh, Paul speaking. He said, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I will live, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith. In the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. So to die uh, to self, to die to self, and live for Christ every day, araw-araw. Hindi lamang once a week, araw-araw. Kaya nga sabi ni Paul, hindi lang literal yan. Uh, yeah, diba? I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. So yun yung kanyang master at saka Lord niya. Yung reason bakit siya nabubuhay dahil sa pananampalatayan niya kay Kristo. Itinuturing niya yung kanyang sarili na ipako na na tulad na kay Kristo. Ibig sabihin, hindi na yung kanyang kalooban ang nasusunod. Yung kalooban ng kanyang Panginoon ang sinusunod. Hallelujah. So according to the Apostle Paul, that I may be conformed to the image of his Son in Romans chapter 8 verse 29, it says here, For whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Hallelujah. So according to Apostle Paul, 
to the Apostle Paul that I may be confirmed to the image his son. So this is speaking uh, Apostle Paul in Romans. So what is the heart of discipleship? What is the heart of discipleship? Discipleship, write it down, is about relationship. Write it down, brethren. Discipleship is about relationship. Intentional yan. Life to life. Experience. You, you are sharing life to life. You share your life. Discipleship is about relationship. It is about pouring your life to another through a loving relationship. So a personal relationship and an intentional relationship. So maliwanag po yan. Discipleship is about relationship. It is about pouring your life to another through a loving relationship. So a personal relationship and an intentional relationship. Hindi lang pagka nag-aaral kayo. Hindi lang pagka yun na the church. Even when you are outside, when you are eating, that is also intentional discipleship. When you visit them, that is part of discipleship. So discipleship starts with our relationship with Christ. It should be start with the Lord Jesus Christ. Because you're going to love you're going to love your disciples. You're going to encourage your disciples. Hallelujah. So biblical discipleship is the act of one person intentionally impacting the life of some other person in the direction of Christ's likeness. So that is based on 2 Timothy uh, chapter uh, just in 2 Timothy uh, chapter 2 verse 1 to 2. We read that one. That's uh, for, uh, the way Paul disciple uh, Timothy. So this emphasis of verse 1 is on Christ's enabling grace to empower and strengthening Timothy in his relationship with the Lord. That's why in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 1 to 3, let me repeat about that. Let me read that verse in 2 Timothy. You therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus and the things that you have heard from me among many witnesses Commit this to faithful men who will be able to teach other also. So the second verse is about spiritual multiplication. It's about uh, spiritual multiplication, empowering. So it started with Paul. It continued with Timothy. Of course, it started with the Lord Jesus Christ. And then uh, Paul uh, imitated Christ. That's why it started with Paul. It continued with Timothy. It continued with faithful men. It continued with others. See, that's, that is the discipleship. So be one, make one, then train one, then send one. Hallelujah. See, our strategy. Praise God. So Paul, Timothy, faithful men, and then the others. So discipleship take place in relationship. Discipleship take place in relationship. Everything in life is about relationship. The chief commandments are about relationship to God and to others. Uh, in Matthew chapter 22 verse 37 Jesus replied Love the Lord your God Love the Lord your God with all your heart With all your soul With all your mind This is the first and greatest commandment To love the Lord your God with all your heart With all your soul with all your, And with all your soul and with all your mind That is the first and greatest commandment And the second is That is the word the second It is what? Love your neighbor as yourself So all the law and the prophets hang on this Two commandments, it's clear in Matthew chapter 22, verse 37 to 39. So our relationship with Jesus is the foundational, foundational relationship that affects every other relationship in life. So our relationship with Jesus is the foundational relationship that affects every other relationship in life. Uh, our deep abiding relationship with Jesus, our deep abiding relationship with Jesus determines how great our witness is to the world. Another thing, helping every believer, helping every believer to understand how they are to abide in Christ is central to discipleship. Helping every believer to understand how they are, how they are to abide in Christ is centered to discipleship. It's always centered in discipleship. Hallelujah. So Jesus knew that without deep heart-to-heart -heart relationship, 
life is meaningless. Jesus knew that without deep heart-to-heart -heart relationship, life is meaningless. Therefore, he concentrated on relationship. Hallelujah. See, see the Lord, our Lord Jesus Christ. Our Lord Jesus Christ is relational. Hallelujah. Jesus daily committed himself to his relationship with his father. Notice the uh, his relationship to the father. In Mark chapter 1 verse 35, before he will start his ministry, we know that Jesus, very early in the morning, and in the morning, the Bible says, uh, rising up a great while before day, he went out and departed into solitary place, and there he prayed before he's going to start his ministry. He spent time with the Father. Hallelujah. In Luke chapter 5 verse 17, uh, Luke chapter 5 verse 16, the Bible says what? So he himself often withdraw into the wilderness and pray so that he will have a devotion, personal devotion to the Father. And he withdrew himself into the wilderness and prayed. In Luke chapter 6 verse 12, And it came to pass in those days that he went out into a mountain to pray and continued all nights in prayers to God. All nights. See, the Lord Jesus Christ, he spent time to the Father before he, uh, he started his ministry. That's why, you know, Jesus Christ is so much, uh, he's, uh, the anointing is flowing. We need to pray. It's just a second and we, we can see the miracle follows. Praise God. Jesus spent the majority of his time with a small group of disciples. Listen to this. Jesus spent the majority of his time with a small group of disciples. In Matthew chapter 9 verse 10, the Bible says, And it came to pass, as Jesus sat at me in the house, behold, many publicans and sinners came and sat down with him and his disciples. In Matthew chapter 9 verse 10. And even in Matthew chapter 15 verse 32, the Bible says, Then Jesus called his disciples to himself and said, I have compassion on the multitude. I have compassion on the multitude because they have now continued with me three days and have nothing to eat and have nothing to eat and I do not want to send them away hungry lest they faint on the way. Kailan nyo yung compassion ng Panginoong Jesus lagi? Praise God. Hallelujah. So Jesus ministered to the crowd but spent time with his disciples even though Jesus is the, is the, the most busiest people in earth the most busiest people on earth in, and yet he, he spent time to his disciples he always find a time to spend time to his disciples hallelujah Jesus ministered to the cross, but it spent time with his disciples. In Mark chapter 3, verse 7, the Bible says, But Jesus withdrew himself with his disciples to the sea, and a great multitude, great multitude from Galilee followed him and from Judea. Everywhere Jesus grow, everywhere Jesus go, there is always a crowd. Miracles follows. Everywhere Jesus go. So when we become like Jesus, we are empowered to make other relationship work and suddenly our disciples become like Jesus. Makikita yung buhay ni Cristo sa kanilang mga buhay. That is the very purpose. That's why Jesus said, Let your light shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. In Matthew chapter 5, verse 16. In 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 1, the Bible says, Imitate me just as I also imitated Christ. Paul is speaking here. Disciples flows out of relationship. So what is the process? Now we're going to speak about the process of discipleship. What is the process of discipleship? Discipleship is a process. It's not automatic, it's a process. 
It's not overnight. It takes time. There's a process. Jesus looked for disciples. Jesus looked for disciples because there's a process. Even before he looked his disciples, he spent time praying for 40 days in the wilderness. He's praying and fasting. Hallelujah. In Matthew chapter 4, verse 18 to 19, we can see there, and Jesus walking by the Sea of Galilee. Sea of Galilee, so to brother Simon called Peter and Andrew his brothers, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. 19. Then he said to them, Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. Mga fishermen ito. Dati. Follow me, and I will make, uh, follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. Ibig sabihin, yung kaluluwa na, uh, fishers of men na, yung kaluluwa na ang kanilang uh, purpose nila, ang kanilang uhulihin na. Ibig sabihin, yung mga tao, manampalataya, upang maligtas. Praise God. Jesus looked for disciples. Practical ways in choosing a disciples. This is very important. Practical ways in choosing a disciple. Number one, you have to write it down. Look for teachable followers. Write it down. This is very important. Practical ways in choosing a disciple. Yes, they are ordinary fishermen and tax collector. But we have to understand that their teacher is the greatest teacher of all time, the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And we know when the follow the Lord Jesus Christ, they shake the world upside down with signs, wonders, and miracles. And their teaching is very simple. We call it apostle doctrine. It's consistent in three parts. And we see the uh, the anointing is flowing. They are teaching that Jesus was the Christ, that he rose from the dead, salvation by faith in his name. Simple as that. And yet, people are getting saved, believing, and they are coming to the saving faith of our Lord Jesus Christ. Nananampalataya sila sa Panginoon. So discipleship is practical ways in choosing a disciples. Number one, look for teachable followers. That is very important. Teachable followers. Another thing, believers who are lovers of the word of God. Believers who are lovers of the word of God. Number three, believers who follow Christ at all costs. Believers who follow Christ at all costs. Handang magsakripisyo. Hindi double-minded. Believers who are available. Kapag naghahanap ka ng disciples, disciple mo, dapat may oras. Mahirap i-disciple na walang oras. Dapat yung available. Believers who are available. You cannot wait forever. People are dying around us. 150,000 at least a day in this world died every day. And we know as a believer, as a Christian believer, if a person hindi na lang palataya sa Panginoon, he didn't, come, he didn't believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, he didn't receive Him, people are going to hell. So, that is the practical ways in choosing a disciple. Believers who are available. Another thing is what? Believers who are willing to serve. Who are willing to serve. Praise God. These are not perfect, but this should be the practical ways in choosing a disciple. Let me repeat that. Look for teachable followers. Hindi yung nagmamarunong hindi yung mataas ang pride hindi yung ayaw magpakorek look for teachable followers 
believers who are lovers of the word of God. Nag-spend ng time sa pagbabasa ng kanyang salita, hindi tamad dumalo sa mga gawain. Yun yung ano, willing na embrace yung vision ng Panginoon. Hallelujah. Believers who follow Christ at all costs, nagsasakribisyo. Kahit minsan mayroong gagawin, pero dahil sa pag-ibig sa Panginoon, handang isakribisyo. Kung nakakita po tayo ng ganun mga kapatid, pagkukulan natin ng panahon, mahalin natin. Hindi tayo manghihinayang. Believers who are available. And then believers who are willing to serve. Handang maglingkod sa Panginoon. Listen to this. Jesus stayed with His disciples. In Matthew chapter 28, verse 20, the promise of the Lord Jesus Christ, I am with you always, even to the ends of the earth. When Jesus commissioned His disciples, and doon yung promise, the promise is there. I am with you always, even to the ends of the earth. Amen? So we must be close to growing disciples. We must be close to growing disciples. Spend time with them. Teach them naturally through life situations. Arrange times together for prayer and study of the scripture. Kaya meron po tayong mga prayer meeting. We have connection group. Meron tayong mga alpha. Meron tayong beta course. At meron tayong fellowship. Tuloy-tuloy po yan. And even our uh, Bible studies in our, here in our page, Alpha, some in the, on our YouTube, it's available there. Praise God. Arrange times together for prayer and study of the scripture. We have also now our devotion, you know. We teach you about the devotion about study, uh, application, prayer, and also application. Study, observation. We use that uh, simple strategy of devotion. Jesus expected obedience, my brothers and sisters. Look about. So Jesus stayed with his disciples, that is association. Now here, Jesus expected obedience, consecrations. That is obedience, consecration. We know that obedience is the highest form of worship. It's not because you memorize the scripture. It's good to memorize the scripture. But we should be doer of the word and not hearers only. In Matthew chapter 11 verse 29, Jesus said, Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. Ang Panginoong Isus mismo nagsagda, and learn from me. So we must follow Christ to learn from Him. And then help them to work on their character. Help them to work in their character. Teach them, listen to this, discipline and correction. Sometimes may mga makukulit, minsan nasasaktan sila, it's okay. We know that open rebuke is better than hidden love. Hindi natin sila pinabayaan na kapag sila ay may asawa, kumilos silang may asawa. Kapag sila ay dalaga, mag-ayos sila. Ganun po yun. Kaya ang our discipleship, mga kapatid, yung discipleship natin, very ano tayo, strict tayo sa discipleship natin na alin? Kailangan the same gender. Very careful tayo doon. Bakit? Kasi... Hindi lamang yung tao ang mahal natin, pati yung kanilang family. Concern tayo sa lahat ng aspekto ng kanilang buhay. Kaya what? Help them work on their character. Kasi yung character ng Panginoon, nakikita sa kanilang buhay. Imumodelo nila ang Panginoon para pag nakita sila ng kanilang mga magulang, kapatid nila, asawa nila, maniwala sa kanila. Na sila nga ay mga Kristiyano. Teach them dis discipline and correction. Tinuturo natin yan sa ating discipleship. Simple lang. Kapag ka tayo ay nalamit, kailangan maayos yung ating pananamit. Hindi kita yung ating mga kaluluwa na. Baka magkasala naman yung iba. 
dahil sa auri ng ating pananamit, ayusin po natin. Ilugar po natin, mga kapatid. Expose them to situation that challenge their commitment. Mahalaga ito. Expose them to situation that challenge their commitment. Mahalaga po yan, mga kapatid. And then encourage them to embrace the cross daily. Ang pagsunod po sa Panginoon araw-araw. Kahit nasan ka, sa loob ka, nasa trabaho ka o nasa labas ka. It's not only if you are uh, with a uh, Christian around you. Even nobody Christian around you. Kailangan nakikita si Kristo sa iyong buhay. Amen? Praise God! Another thing, Jesus showed them how to live. Now we're going to talk about demonstration. Hallelujah. Association, consecration, now demonstration. Jesus demonstrated it. Jesus showed them how to love. Jesus showed them how to live. In John chapter 13 verse 15, the Bible says, For I have given you an example that you should do as I have done to you. Kita niyo po yung application? Simple and plain. John 13, 15. Jesus is speaking. For I have given you an example. Nakita, you, nakita natin yung buhay ng Panginoon. We see how Jesus disciple His disciples. Kung paano niya tinuruan. He modeled it. For I have given you an example that you should do as I have done to you. Kung paano ka inuunawa ng Panginoon, ganun mo sila inuunawain. Paano ka minamahal ng Panginoon, ganun mo rin ipakita. Mauunawaan mo yung kapwa ang madali. Kung paano ka tinitingnan ng Panginoon, ganun mo tingnan lang yung kapwa. Lalong-lalo na sa iyong mga disciple. Hallelujah. Praise God. We must model Christ life. That is very important, mga kapatid. We must model Christ life. Let them see our priorities and values live out. Pamuhay natin yan. Let them see our priorities and values. Share the inner light of the soul. Show them how to lead and how to serve. Show them how to lead and how to serve. Sabi ng isang kapatiran sa akin nung Friday lang, Pastor, padala akong makakita na pastors tagi evangelize lumalabas pa rin. Ginawa ng Panginoong Isus yun eh. Kasi marami pagka mga pastors na nandun na lang sa ano, nasa church na lang. Eh meron naman silang lutos, there's nothing wrong about that. It's okay naman yun, you delegate. Pero paminsan-minsan, Samahan natin sila. Ang Panginoong Isus kasi is always on the move. Hallelujah. We must follow Christ to learn from Him. Hallelujah. So we model Christ. Show them how to lead and how to serve. That's very important. Shortcomings and failures can become means of teaching. All things work together for good. To those who love Him, according to His purpose. Hallelujah. Purihin ang Panginoon. Shortcomings and failures can become means of teaching. Lagi po tayong may matutunan po sa buhay natin. Listen to this. Jesus gave them something to do. Now here it comes, delegation. Kita po natin yung process mga kapatid. Nag-umpisa sa end. Yung association, Jesus stayed, that is association, and then consecration, tinuro ng Panginoon, kung ano yung dapat gawin sa kanila, yung palo, and then, pinakita ng Panginoon, demonstration. And then, delegation naman. Jesus give them something to do. ba? Ang sabi niya, I will make you what? Fishers of men. That is delegation. That means you empower them. In Luke chapter 10, verse 2 to 3, it's clear, the Bible says, the, then Jesus said, the harvest truly is great, but the laborers are few. 
Kita nyo, laborers are few. Dami. Eh, sabi ni Kristo, the harvest truly is great. But the laborers are few. Therefore, pray the Lord of the harvest. To have the Lord of the harvest. To send out laborers into His harvest. Go your way. Sino word? Go your way. It's always an action word. Go your way. Behold, I send you out as lambs among wolves. Prepare ka na eh. Kaya, dinidelegate ka na ng Panginoon. Ready ka na. Nag-train ka na. Natapos mo na yung mga process na mga pag-aaral. Kita nyo yung process, hindi ka agad nag-jump yun. <laughs> Kasi kapag pinapunta mo ka agad doon, kapag inatake sila ng mga demonyo, sa umpisa pa lang, wala na, mag-give up na. Bakit? Sa umpisa pa lang, baka pag sinabihan mo na pusong mamun, nandiyan na magpapatuloy yun. Pero pag matibay na, nagdaan na sa mga proseso ng mga pag-aaral, magpapatuloy yan. Kasi nadama niya yung presensya ng Panginoon, yung pag-ibig ng Panginoon, yung totoo na pagmamahal, yung totoo na discipleship intentional. Ganun naman yung mga tao minsan eh. Dito not expect you to be perfect. You're not always, you're not perfect. We are not perfect. But they expect us to be honest. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The Bible says, The harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Pray to the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into His harvest field. Go! I am sending you out like lambs among wolves. Kita niyo yung mga ano ng Panginoon? Susuguin ka ng Panginoon. Bakit? Ready ka na eh. Na-empower ka na ng Holy Spirit. Natutunan mo na yung mga aral. We must involve learners in ministry. This is very important as a disciple. And a disciple also at the same time. We must involve learners, learners in ministry. Make specific assignments. Utilize their gifts and skills. Trust them that they can do the job. And then help them to take leadership roles in the church. Nakikita po natin yan, mga kapatid. We started in a prayer meeting. You started to do the opening prayer. You started to do the hosting. And then now, while you are uh, listening and watching, and at the same time, you are helping us already in the church through many labors of love. Your labor of love, labor of loves. Now you continue to uh, in training to train other also. And some of you already started making disciples. Hallelujah! Purihin ang Panginoon. Amen? Help them take the leadership roles in the church. Jesus made His disciples accountable. Now it's supervision. Hindi mo sila babayaan. You oversee them. Supervision. In Luke chapter 10 verse 1, the Bible says, At after this, the Lord appointed 72 others and sent them two by two ahead of Him to every town and place where He was about to go. So, mayroon pa pala yung ibang disciple ang Panginoon bukod sa 12 disciples. There is another 72 others. He sent them two by two. That is evangelism. Two by two. Ahead of him to every town and place where he was about to go. In Luke chapter 10 verse 17, the Bible says, The 72 returned with joy. See? Kapag sumunod ka sa Panginoon, if you obey, The commandment of the Lord the, When the Lord commissioned them The Bible says The 72 returned with joy And said Lord Even the demons submit to us In your name Hallelujah There is power in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ So we must check on them We must check on them Kaya nga sinabihan ng Panginoon, di ba? Kasi tuwan-tuwa na sila doon. Rejoice! Not because the demons obey to you, but rejoice because your name is written in the books of life. 
<laughs> Hallelujah. Nakita nila, bumalik kayo doon sa inyong ano, wag kayo wag kayong masira. Yung focus ninyo. <laughs> Hallelujah. So we must check on them. Ano ang ginagawa ng Panginoon sa kanyang mga disciple? Have frequent times of review. Ask questions. Provide encouragement and correction at the same time. Hindi lang puro encouragement, hindi lang puro motivation, correction also. Ganon din naman, hindi lang puro correction. Encouragement and correction. Pag-ibig yan, atas ng pag-ibig yan, part of love yan, mga kapatid. Ito yung mga tao talaga na may vision. Gusto ang ano, uh, babago ang kanilang buhay at yung mga tao sa paligid nila mayroong compassion. Hallelujah! Gusto nilang lumago. Yung mga, ta- yung mga ganitong mga disciple, ano yan eh? Taus-puso yan na susunod sa kalooban ng Panginoon. Provide encouragement and correction. Affirm their strength and self-worth. Purihin ang Diyos. And then, this is very important, avoid becoming authoritarian. Let the word speak. Let the word speak means the Bible. The word of God. Let the word speak. Avoid becoming authoritarian. Ibig sabihin, you model it. Pinapakita mo, nakikita ka. Hallelujah. Ipinamumuhay mo yung salita ng Panginoon. So avoid becoming authoritarian. Hindi lang yung puro utos ka ng utos. Iikaw, nakaupo ka na lang. Hindi ka looban ng Panginoon yan. Minumodelo mo nga eh. Ang Panginoon, ganun po ang Panginoon. Siya yung ating Lord and Master natin. Siya yung ating pong pinakamodelo natin. Praise God. Let the word speak. Yung salita ng Panginoon, an- ano to, makapangyarihan to. Pagka nangusap sa kanila, makukonvict po sila. What I'm saying is, does it mean na hindi mo na sinasabi sa kanila yung dapat nilang marinig? Sabihin mo po yun. Kasi kalooban po ng Panginoon yun. Pero avoid becoming authoritarian. And then Jesus anticipate, anticipated fruitfulness. What happened? Pagkatapos lahat ng ito. Of course, multiplication. Hallelujah! Purihin ang Panginoon. Ha? Huh? Jesus anticipated fruitfulness. Kita mo yung proseso ng Panginoon? Napakaganda. If we just follow the step-by-step process, then, kapag nakita natin ang lahat ng ito, Jesus anticipated fruitfulness, multiplication. Makikita po ninyo yan. Patututo silang paano mag-host, mag-speak, mag-pray. Then they will start opening their alpha, they speak in the alpha. And then they, we will see them, they will evangelize. And then they will preach. Soon they will be a church planters. Hallelujah! Purihin ang Panginoon. In John chapter 15 verse 2, the Bible says, Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes that it may bear more fruit. Hallelujah. More fruit. John 15, 18, the Bible says, By this, by this, my Father is glorified that you bear much fruit. Notice the word, much fruit. So you will be my disciples. Hallelujah. Purihin ang Panginoon. Kita nyo, namubunga, nagmumultiply. Ganun po yung mga anak ng Diyos, yung mga disipulo ng Panginoon. Mga puspus ng Espiritu ng Diyos. Hallelujah. And John 15, 16, the Bible says, Go and bring forth fruit and that your fruit should remain. Hallelujah. Now the Bible says, You did not choose me, but I choose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit and that your fruit should remain. That whatever you ask the Father in my name, He may give you. 
So we must make disciples, my brothers and sisters. This is not an option. This is the commandment of the Lord. If we love the Lord, we must make disciples. And our challenge is only what? This year, be one, make one. Hallelujah. It's not hard. Pero mayroon pong process. Pag-pray po natin yun. If there is our heart desire, the Bible says, Delight yourself to the Lord, and He will give you the desires of your heart. You just pray, Lord. Teach me, Lord. To disciple. Of course, if you want to disciple, has been said that only a disciple can make a disciple. Be willing, Lord. Gusto kong lumago. I want to grow. Then approach someone who is matured enough to disciple you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We must make disciples. These disciples become like their leader. When you speak about leader, he has a servant heart. We must make disciples. Disciples become like their leader. Develop a vision of multiplication. Dream with them about the role in their harvest, in the harvest, and then anticipate the final in gathering. Jesus gave them His Spirit, and what happened? Impartation na ito. Hallelujah. Puspos na sila ng Spirit ng Panginoon. Why? In John chapter 20, verse 22, the Bible says, And when He had said this, He read on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Hindi ka naman susuguin ng Panginoon. Kaya nga yung, sa, even in Acts chapter 1, verse 8, di ba? And in, 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 I mean in Luke chapter 24, verse 29, the Bible says, Behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you. But tarry in the set in this in the city of Jerusalem until you are in union with power from on high. From on high. Hallelujah. Puspos ka ng espiritu ng Diyos. Hindi ka babayaan ng Panginoon. Pinagkaluban niya tayo ng kapangyarihan. I have given you the authority, sabi nga ng Panginoon, to trample serpents and scorpions. And to overcome all the powers of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Sino daw yun? In Mark chapter 16, right? And this sign will follow those who believe in my name. They will cast out demons. They will speak new tongues. They will lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. And in Acts chapter 1 verse 8, the Bible says, But you shall receive power, dunamis, and you shall be what? my witnesses were in Jerusalem in Samaria in Judea, in all Judea in Samaria and to the ends of the earth but you shall receive power why you need to receive power? which power? the Holy Spirit why you need that? you're going to witness you're going to witness so the Lord Jesus Christ hallelujah you're going to disciples purihin ang Panginoon hallelujah so we must let that we must let the Spirit of Christ have His way. God's work can only be done in His work. Cherish every disciple in whom you see the fullness of the Holy Spirit. And then entrust them to His leadership. Encourage them to walk in His anointing. Pray for them regularly. By name. Pray for them by name. Spend time. Talk to them in the phone. Or maybe sometimes visit them. And then that's our life application. What is our life application here? So discipleship is a process. Remember that. Discipleship is a process. The question, do you envision yourself to be a spiritual multiplier? Here's the question. Do you envision yourself to be a spiritual multiplier? Start to pray now and believe by faith that you can do all things through Christ who gives you strength. Where are you now in this process? Where are you in this process? 
Are you winning souls for Jesus? Hallelujah. Do you have a mentor? Do you have a discipler? Do you have a disciple? Then give God the glory if you have all this. Are you discipling others? If not, why not? You are only making disciple. You are only making disciple if your disciples make disciples. You are only making disciple if your disciples make disciples. So be one, make one. That means be a disciple, make a disciple. Be a disciple, make a disciple. Be one, make one. Be a disciple, make a disciple. You can do all things through Christ who give you strength. Amen? Hallelujah! Amen. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Purihin ang Panginoon. Let me pray for you, my brothers and sisters. I don't want to miss this. I, wanna I don't want to close this worship service without giving you an opportunity to make Jesus the Lord of your life. Will you pray with me? Just say this prayer by heart. Sabihin mo ito nagbumula sa puno. Sabi mo, Heavenly Father, I come to you today. I repent of my sins. Please forgive me. I believe you died on the cross of Calvary and rose again. Lord Jesus, come into my heart. I make you my Lord and Savior. Thank you for forgiving me. And thank you for the grace. And thank you for the eternal life. I want to follow you, Lord, from the rest of my life. As your disciple, I commit myself to make disciple also. This I pray in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Have you prayed that simple prayer, my brothers and sisters? If you pray that simple prayer, my brothers and sisters, get her that prayer. And I want you to share. Share this uh, message. Start making a disciple. And start to pray. And get connected in the body of Christ. Start reading your Bible. And meditate. And if we, we are free now, if we are... Make sure you go to church, my brothers and sisters. And always, always share your faith to others, to your friends, especially to your loved ones. And if you do that, my brothers and sisters, your life will never be the same again. Would you raise your hand to receive the blessings of the Lord? Now to the King of kings and Lord of lords, mighty God, everlasting Father and Prince of Peace. And, I put, and because you put God first place in your life and you continue to live a life worthy of the calling and obedient to His word right now in the name of Jesus receive your healing receive your breakthrough by faith in the name of Jesus now I bless you in the name of the Father of the Son of the Holy Spirit Amen and Amen Hallelujah Blessed be the name of the Lord once again my brothers and sisters thank you for tuning in we love you and we're praying for you. Lord willing, we'll see you on Friday. God bless.